You know, being a prophet of God in the Old Testament was a difficult job, and it was a heavy burden to bear. If you read um, any of the prophet books in the in the second in the back half of the Old Testament, you see that it was difficult. I mean, you look at Jeremiah and you look at the laments and and the conversations he has with God. Uh, you look at Elijah and Elisha and and how they had to battle wicked kings and 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 people that hated them. And you look at people like Hosea who had to marry uh, a prostitute. And and you look at all of these different prophets and you know that that it was difficult. That it was it was a burden that was not necessarily sought after at all. It was one that was called upon. That you were called to be a prophet of God. But in all of those cases, when you look at those prophets. They, even when they weren't excited about the message at all, even when they were begging God to be let out of the message, they always obeyed. They always carried out God's command. Well, except for one guy, Jonah. Jonah is the only instance in the scripture that we have someone that literally runs away from the command of God to be a prophet. And and it's ironic because Jonah had already been a prophet, apparently. This was someone who uh, had already been carried and done messages from and for God. Uh, and yet this message, strangely enough, was different for Jonah. And, and we'll look at that as we get farther into it and we'll examine what exactly that looks like. But we're not going to get there quite yet. That's still a few conversations away. But what we do see is that Jonah was willfully able to to decide, I'm gonna not do this. I'm just gonna go the other way. Let's let's read let's read the account in uh, Jonah chapter one, and we'll make a couple of observations. Verse one. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. Now, when it says great, great doesn't mean like, hey, this is really good. Great means like big. This is a massive city. This is a well-known city. This is a city of power because it was. During this time, the Assyrians, they were the big boys on the block. They were doing things that nobody else had seen. So Jonah knew very well who Nineveh, what Nineveh was. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Now to give you a geography lesson, uh, so if you were to put Israel in the middle, okay, Nineveh would be up to the north. That's where Nineveh was, kind of the north and and a little bit off uh, to the we- uh, to the west, okay. Now Tarshish, people believe, was in Spain. So from where where he would have been near Joppa, that was way off to the west. That was nowhere close. Uh, it was about as far in the known world as you can get. So. Already we know that not not only is Jonah running away, he's running away big, okay? So he went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. That's an interesting statement. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. And then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. He was exhausted, probably out of fear, probably out of anxiousness. But he was exhausted to the point that he didn't even notice that the ship was in the middle of a massive storm, a deadly storm, something the Mediterranean was certainly known for was throwing up violent storms. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. Now, when we read the text, we see that this says lowercase God, okay? Because they don't yet understand what's going on here, okay? So in verse, uh, we will, well, okay, we don't have time to keep going, but I want to make a couple of observations on this before we get to something, okay? Now, one of them is, is that Jonah was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord, Now, this is a really interesting statement because Jonah actually knows better. And we're going to see that in the text tomorrow, that Jonah very much knows better. And we also have to know that in this world, when they talk about gods, they all believe very similar actually to to kind of the Greek uh, mythology type ideas. Now, they don't necessarily physically believe in Zeus, though at that time, those things were were starting to to develop 
Um, but what that means is that they saw that there were gods that did different functions. There was never just one god. It was always a god with a specific purpose. Uh, even when you look at the Gil Gil Gilgamesh epic, uh, which is a similar flood story to Noah and the ark, you look and you see that they have all sorts of different jobs and duties and responsibilities. So Jonah, though, understands exactly who God is. And yet he's willing to say, God, I'm bigger than you. I, I, I don't want to do what you want me to do. So I'm, I'm going to go do my own thing. Now we look at that and we go, Jonah, you're a dummy head. But I think we can all admit that we have our own moments when we're dummy heads. When we know exactly what God has for us, wants for us to do, how to obey him, how to follow him. And yet we choose to look at God and say, God, I know better. Okay, more on Jonah tomorrow.